Hey everyone, Captain Buck here, back with another video. Um, today I'm going to be showing all of you people how to get Pirate Legend fast, quickly in Sea Thieves, how to get, your th how to get the three levels you need to level 50, and um, maybe how to level up Athena fast as well. So we're going to go ahead, jump straight into this, and I'm going to show you guys how to do this. All I ask is that this video helps you, if you guys could leave a like and subscribe, it would be hugely appreciated, and it's free. So let's go ahead and hop into this. And uh, I'll show you guys the little tips and tricks that you need to uh, get to Pirate Legend. So let's go. Also, it would be much appreciated if you guys go check out my Twitch. That'll be linked in the description. Go with the Discord. And I also have a TikTok account. You guys can check that out. The small little 60 second clips will be posted there. And um, feel free to uh, check out the Twitch. Drop a follow because at 100 subs on YouTube and 500 followers on Twitch, we're going to be giving away a huge, massive giveaway. I will leave you, I'll keep you guys all updated on, in the Discord, so feel free to join that for any updates. And um, yeah, let's hop straight into this video. So we are going to be starting off with Order of Souls for our first level. So when we first get into the game, we're going to want to do ourselves the favor of spawning at Ancient Spire, at Ancient Spire Outpost, because we are going to, de to the Devil's Roar for Order of Souls. I will explain why here in a minute, but try and spawn at Ancient Spire if you can. We are then going to go to find the Order of Souls tent, and we are going to find the Emissary flag, and we are going to raise it. Once we've raised it, we can get, as we level our emissary flag up, we can get double gold, double rep, and do ourselves the favor of getting there even quicker. And once we reach emissary five, we can get a special emissary quest that we can use to level up even more and get even more gold and level up even faster. So after we raise our emissary flag, we're going to want to find our boat. And we're going to notice that there is a flag on the back of our boat. This flag basically tells you and ships around you that you have an emissary up. People will try to sink you for your emissary. That's why you have to be very careful. And you want to make sure to supply up. But there is a line on the bottom of the flag. That means you're at level one. That, as you level up, will start turning into a circle. Once that reaches a circle, it'll have a max of five lines those lines mean that you're level five that's the max emissary you can get and it can give you 1.5 to two times level and gold for order of souls after that we're going to want to head down to our map table and we're going to want to find mario's peak outpost on the map we're going to go straight east zoom in and find mario's peak outpost we're going to circle it so we remember where it is and we're going to come all the way from Ancient Spire, all, and we're going to ride all the way to Mars Peak, and go straight east. The reason we are heading to the Devil's Roar is because the Devil's Roar has Ashen Loot. Ashen Loot will give you double rep and double gold. Gold is good for using, for using on items and cosmetics, and you want to level up to get to Pirate Legend. So in the Devil's Roar, with an Emissary, and plus the double gold and rep, so, excuse me, um, you are going to get about three times as much, maybe even three and a half as much as you would get without an emissary and being in normal biome. So 
So once we've arrived at Morrow's Peak Outpost, we are going to want to find the Order of Souls lady in her tent. You are going to find her on the opposite side of the island on the tavern. We are going to talk to her. And once we've talked to her, she has quests. We're going to buy all the quests that she has in stock for us. After we've bought all of the quests from her, we're gonna head back to our boat and there is going to be a voyage table on our ship. We're going to go to the voyage table. We are going to propose a voyage, find our voyage, put it down, and we're going to vote for it. Now we have quests in our quest dial. We're going to check them. Now yours aren't going to be the same as mine. They will differ between how high your level is and how low they are. Depending on how high you have, the voyages will be better. On the lower level you have, the voyages won't be as good, so you might not get as good loot. But you level up, the more you level up, the better loot that you will get from these voyages. So now that we know what our voyages look like, we are going to look where they were last seen, rumored to be, last sighted, anywhere that it says. We are going to find the island in the Devil's Roar, and we're going to circle it just so that we know where to go. We're going to do this with all of our quests so that we can get the maximum amount of loot from the voyage. Once we've done that, we're going to pick an island to go to and we are going to go ahead and complete these quests. So once you've circled all your islands, we are going to sail to one of them and we are going to complete it. So for example, I'm going to find my best quest, and it was at Brimstone Rock. So I'm going to go on the map, find Brimstone Rock, in this case it's southeast, and we are just going to sail straight southeast to Brimstone Rock to complete the voyage, and we are going to collect the loot from it. Once we've made it to Brimstone Rock, we're going to head to the island, and we will notice that there will be music. Depending on how big the island is, you'll have to search for the music, but the music will lead you to, the, to skeleton waves. There will be skeletons, random, randomized skeletons, whether they're shadow, normal, bandana, um, golden. They're all, there's a bunch of different skeletons, but you'll notice that there's ways that you'll have to complete. And as you complete waves, you'll notice that there will be drums, music, more intense music that will signify that the captains are coming out. They can be any type of captain. They, it depends on what your paper looks like, but it can be any type of captain out there. You need to defeat them and they will drop you a skull. As you kill these captains, they will give you emissary value. And these skulls that they drop will give you emissary value when you pick them up, which is another good thing. So the better the skull, the better the loot, the better the emissary value will be, and the higher it will go up, which is another good part about emissaries. And you can take these skulls back to your boat for even more emissary value. Not much, but it will give you emissary value for putting treasure on your boat. That certain treasure for that emissary. Or for that company. So the more and more that you level up your emissary, the more and more value the skulls will be worth. Gems can also be taken to the Order of Souls, so can treasure chests. Um, but the more you level up, the more value it will give you. And once you've reached Emissary 5, you go back to the lady and you'll get a special quest from her. You can lower, you can lower and re-raise your flag, or you can keep it up and just keep doing Order of Soul things. But I'm not going to waste too much more time on Order of Souls. We need to move on. But this is how you do Order of Souls. This is the quickest way, and I would definitely recommend Devil's Roar. 
We are now going to move on to Gold Hoarders. This is the easiest faction to level up. So just like before, we're going to spawn Angel Spire, go to the Gold Hoarder, vote up the Emissary, and we're going to head to the Devil's Roar. Once we are back at the Outpost, we're going to talk to the Gold Hoarder, we're going to browse, and we're going to buy a Ashen Vault quest. After we've got our quest, we're going to propose it, vote for it, and you'll notice when you pull out your quest log, you have a compass. This compass has a key on it, and it will point to where you need to go. Now, I will show you what the point compass points to and how you dig it up, but in this case, it's south. And if we look south, we will see that Flame's End is the closest island. Now, it could be the island below that, Devil's Thirst, but it's most likely going to be Flame's End. So we're now at Flame's End. And, oh, there's a Mermaid Gem over there. That can give you good emissary value. And um, it can raise your emissary value even from putting it on your ship. So you want to make sure you get that on your boat. And that sound is a Mermaid Statue. Mermaid Statues have three different stages. There's blue, green, and red. Blue is the easiest, you can do one to two people. Green is medium, you can do two to three people. And red, you need three to four people, maybe sometimes two, depending on what you use. But red are the hardest ones, and but they give the best mermaid gem out of all of them. So now we're going to use our compass, and we're going to find and see that this key is squiggling around a lot, which means that we're on the right island. We're gonna follow it until it starts squiggling really, really fast, and then eventually it's gonna start turning, and that's when we know we're right on top of it. And then we get our shovel out, we dig, and we'll get a bottle quest. And this bottle quest will give you a map piece, and you're going to have to go and follow the compass until you get the X. Once you get the X, at that island, you will dig up a key. That key will lead to a vault. A vault is full of treasure, and you can get a really good treasure chest. You have to do combinations, puzzles, and you take all the treasure out. It's full of ashen chests, which give you double the times of normal ones. So that is why we are doing this in the Devil's Roar. We're going to do this a couple times to get to level 5, and then we'll be good and to sell. But we want to make sure that we get the key first. And the first one will get us about level 3. So we're going to need to do two volts to get to level 5. And then we'll get a special emissary quest. I'll show you what the vault looks like. But the emissary after that is just like Order of Souls. You get an emissary quest and you can raise and lower it to get more and more um, level. And I forgot to mention that this will eventually reveal an island or the piece of an island, if you get good at it, you can figure out what the island is just by looking at this. Like, I know that this is a three-piece island just by looking at it, Flintlock Peninsula. But it would eventually so show an island, reveal an island, with an X on it. So that is the um, best way to go about getting the key. It's the only way that you can get a vault key. So, this was the X where we got our X for the island. So we're going to head to this island, which is Flintlock Peninsula, and we're going to dig up the chest, or the vault key, and I just died. Great. So we're now at our island, and we are going to look for our X. We're going to find our X, and once we've found our X, we're going to dig up the chest. I would use the compass to find what side of the island you're on and what side of the island the um, the chest or the X is going to be on and follow that to get to the X. So once we found our spot, we're going to dig 
and we're gonna get skeletons that spawn on us. And these skeletons will drop trinkets again. And sometimes they'll get lucky and they'll die by the geysers. But pick these trinkets up, put them into your chest, and they'll give you even more emissary value. So we have our key. It's an Ashen Reaches gold key, which means that all the chests are gonna be marauders or higher. Sometimes you'll get seafarers. But we're gonna head to Ashen Reaches, find where to put this key in, and we're going to do the vault. I will show you guys step by step how to do the vault, and um, we'll get this done. And hopefully we'll be level five by then. So once we're at the island, we are going to find the cave. The cave is on the west side of the island. There's going to be a little ledge. If you come in from the east side of the island, you're gonna walk over, there's gonna be a ledge. You're gonna drop down and there's gonna be a cave that goes upwards. But if you're coming in from the west side, there'll be a cave entrance that goes diagonally up. You'll see here in a second, you drop straight down and there's a cave that looks like that. And there's going to be a set of rocks where you can place the totem because he needed to unlock. You're going to take your totem and you're going to place it. Once you've placed it, a door will open. And after that door opens, there's going to be a door to a cavern all the way down below that will actually open the treasure vault. Now we're going to notice that when the vault opens, there's going to be a lot of gold on the ground. Don't worry about the gold. Go straight for the medallions. The medallions are little coins that you will put into the tomb. You need three, and they will reveal the code for the blocks. See, there's a skull right there. So I know that right there, that should be a skull. There's another medallion up there. We're going to grab that. We're going to throw that in there. And we're going to, it's going to show our next piece that we have. And the next one would be a chain downwards. So we're going to find the chain downwards, and pretty much you can find it from there. So if you go over to the block, you can find the skull that has a chain, and you can figure out what the third one is. So it would be an up and down key, key and lock. And that is pretty much the code. You'll enter the solution, and it'll open the door, and you'll get the mega chest from the vault. Now, after you get the mega chest out of the vault, what you're going to do is continue to get all the chests and trinkets out as many as possible and try to get as much of them out as you can because the door starts to close. Um, the door closes very slowly. You probably have about five to six minutes in the vault itself before it closes and you can't get any more chests. So definitely make sure that you're spending your time wisely and after the vault door closes, that is when you will collect the gold because you will start dying and you'll get as much gold as possible. So you're just going to do this over and over and over again. And um, once you get grade five, you can then get the emissary quest from the gold hoarder and you can either lower and re-raise <clears throat> and do the emissary quest because it'll give you all captain chests, five on each island. Or you can choose to go ahead and get the Emissary Quest, do the Emissary Quest, and just keep doing vaults. And you can sell everything at grade 5 and just get it and sell it, get it and sell it. That would be another productive way. But I would recommend grinding the, um, I would recommend grinding the Emissary Quest. The Emissary will not give you grade 5. It will give you about grade 4, so you're going to have to do another voyage for, to get grade 5 but you'll just keep doing that back and forth. And one more thing for the Gold Hoarder Vault, I would recommend bringing a rowboat, putting it near the exit, and just stacking up as many chests in the rowboat, putting all the chests in the rowboat, and then rowing it to your boat. That would be the fastest thing that I could recommend for you. It'll help you out a lot in the long run, so definitely make sure to find a rowboat before doing this, and make sure to get as many vault keys as possible so that you can just go back and forth to vaults. I forgot to mention that, but I would definitely recommend that as well. So now we're going to moving on to the merchant and the merchant is, is, isn't as hard as a lot of people think. It's actually really easy. It's probably the second easiest out of all of them or the third easiest. 
Okay, so for merchant, it's not gonna matter what outpost you spawn at. It's going to be the same. It'll be different routes, but we are going to go to the merchant. We are going to grab a lost shipment voyage. We're gonna boat down the emissary and we're gonna go to our boat, propose the quest, and we'll see this path. We'll see this path that it wants us to take. So we're gonna take a look at our map. And for example, this one is that dagger tooth all the way to Marauder's Ark. We're going to mark those two places and we're going to see the path that it wants us to take. This is a diagonal path. It has a little curve by shark tooth to go around it, but we're going to take this path and it is gonna go all the way from there to here. There's going to be barrels of birds. There's gonna be birds in the sky, so I would recommend keeping your eye out because you can get a captain's key, which you'll need here in a little bit whenever we find the lost shipment or the wrecked ship. And you wanna get clues to find out to where the ship is located. So we're gonna follow this path and we're gonna find and stop at as many birds as possible. So we're coming on our first set of birds. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna stop at the set of birds and we're gonna check out what the birds have for us. It could be a clue, a key, anything like that. So you'll notice for the first one that you'll get a merchant barrel. The barrel will be f have a clue in it and it'll have something like this, or it could just have a note. So we're gonna head to Sunken Grove and see what that part of the island has for us. So we're now at Sunken Grove, and we're gonna notice that there's a shipwreck here. There is a, uh, and it'll have a couple pieces of loot, and most of the time it'll have a key there. For this one, we found the key. We had to go back and find it, but you need to make sure that you check the bushes, the sand, everything thoroughly to make sure on islands that the key is not there before you move on. So now we need to figure out the clues and find where the shipwreck is. If you find the shipwreck early, then you're lucky. And so in this case, we found the shipwreck early, which was really cool. So all we need is the key to open up the captain's quarters, which is where all of the crates are gonna be that will level you up an emissary really fast. So when we open up the door, we're most likely gonna have a couple kegs. Sometimes you get a firebomb crate, sometimes you'll get a cannonball crate that is empty, but you're gonna get a bunch of merchant things. It could be really good crates or it could be decent crates. These crates will guarantee you grade five. The whole one single, one singular voyage will give you grade five for merchant, which is really cool and really good. So all that you need to do is do multiple of these quests, get a bunch of loot and then sell it in masses and it'll definitely level you up really fast. So after we get grade five, we're going to finish getting the loot and head straight to an outpost so that we can get to grade, get the grade five quest and check out what it's like and what it has for us. So we're now gonna figure out what this quest has for us. And the merchant grade five quest usually has 20 crates that you can collect and deliver. I would, if you want to try this, I would recommend it if you are into that delivering crates. But if not, I would recommend just doing multiple of these voyages, stock, stacking and then selling them in masses so that you get a bunch of rep. You can try them if you want, but they will not give you much level or anything. Um, I would not lower and re-raise for it. I would just leave your flag up and keep going with all the merchant stuff. It'll just be way easier. All right guys, that was gonna end our video and how to get Pirate Legend fast in Sea of Thieves. I hope that this helped you. Um, again, I would literally, I would just recommend doing as many merchant ship quests as possible. That would be the best option to get you mer to get your merchant leveled up quick. Don't forget to buy your your tag your tags every five levels you level up because you get better quests. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. It would be much, much appreciated. Feel free to go check out my Twitch. 
check out the Discord and go check out my TikTok. Those will all be linked in the description. I have 500 followers on Twitch and 100 subscribers on YouTube. We're going to be giving away a giant, massive giveaway. And uh, I'll keep you guys all updated in the Discord on that, so feel free to join that. And uh, until next time, guys, we will uh, see you next time. Peace.